right, welcome back to Spotlight. Thank you for making time for us. And as always, remember, you can be part of this discussion. And the topic that we are discussing in studio being the state of the nation. The question we are asking you is whether Kenya is better off or worse off as of now. Twitter is at TV47KE. Remember, you can send us a message on 22047. You can call in as well on the number on your screen. And let me introduce my guests to my immediate left is... Jeremiah Kioni, Member of Parliament in Deragua. Yes. Betty Adera, Governance Expert, and Benji Ndolo, a Political Analyst. Uh, gentlemen and ladies, thank you for making time for us here on TV47 and for the first show of Spotlight. Good evening and thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Kenya's population over the years has quadrupled from 8 million in 1963 to 47 million plus now, according to the statistics. Life expectancy has increased from 48 years in 1963 to 60 plus years, the latest data in 2011 as per that data. Is it not an irony then that things are improving at the same time, it seems as though there is a double-edged sword that the negativity as well is not ending. Benji, let me start with you. Thank you very much and I'm sure you called me because this is the kind of things I talk about all the time. Fair as enough. A, as a policy uh, analyst, uh, these are the things I tweet about all the time. This I love to look and study the numbers. I have worked over the years with uh, such institutions as the uh, IEA, Institute of Economic Affairs, mm -hmm. Office of the Auditor General, um, Transparency International, and many, many, many other uh, bodies. I'd like to correct you, though, slightly. Mm -hmm. the, the population jump is not quadruple. Mm -hmm. It's actually more it's than more five than times. Quadruple. It yeah, is. more yeah. than quadruple. It is. More than quadruple. Because we are talking over 40 million mm -hmm. out of a population of 8 million. In fact, when I was a young person, I remember Kenya with a population of about 17 million. Mm -hmm. And so the population growth is not exactly an advantage per se. Why? Um, and Mishmua will go more into this. They are the lawmakers. They look at policy uh, documents mm -hmm. and they feed policy documents. We've got 1 million children being born into this country every year. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of graduates. Mm -hmm. Clearly, we have no jobs. And on the, the point of children stuck. being born into the country, shouldn't that be more of a blessing? Should it be more of a blessing or but, a but how according to, to your view? Them? How are we going to feed them if mm -hmm. we have never-ending challenges on the food security front? Mm -hmm. Forget about even the locusts, which mm -hmm. are a big menace. Mm -hmm. We are not food secure yet. We have not been able to tame and curb corruption. Mm -hmm. Our industries, you know, from uh, pyrethrum to cotton to wheat mm -hmm. to maize uh, to milk, all of these are not coffee, tea, are not able to create jobs, etc. So you have a country that is ever on talk mode, mm -hmm. delivering very little, and so therefore very little in growth, lots of hope, yes, mm -hmm. but very little in growth, increased debt, more money servicing debt, therefore more taxes. I've seen the small tax uh, for small traders mm -hmm. that is being introduced, I think, two days from today, which more can tell us more. Actually, mm -hmm. tomorrow, 20th. Mm -hmm. Um, all of these paint a very bad picture. Let me get Betty, Betty Adera's thoughts on this. Betty, are we worse off or better off as of now, as a country? Depending on how you want to look at it, we can actually be both. But going back to the statistics that you have just said, I think we should count ourselves blessed that children are not dying as much as they used to. Women are not dying as much as they used to when they're having children. Mm -hmm. And we're having this... But if the condition but of living is I'm, not I'm, 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 get, I'm, get, I'm getting to that. Uh -huh. You know, and um, we're we having, like, a huge number of, of women. We're having a huge, huge number of young people, right? Which, if harnessed very well, can actually be a very, very big blessing, not only for us in Kenya, but also for the entire continent. Remember, Africa is the youngest continent in the world, and Kenya is contribute significantly to, to part of that. But for me, the question uh, I, I would ask is, there are that many, yes, we are not dying as much, yes, but what exactly is the quality mm -hmm. of life, you know, of the, of the average Kenyan man, Kenyan woman, Kenyan, Kenyan youth, Kenyan child? And I think I go back to, for me, uh, what is it that is eroding that hope for young people? What is it that is eroding, you know, the quality of life for Kenyans? And for me, I will just single it out into one thing, mm -hmm. the corruption. I think corruption has reached uh, atomic levels. You know, in, in Kenya right now, uh, we are looking at uh, people, we are looking at amounts that have never, ever been heard of in mm -hmm. the history. And headlines after in, headlines. We'll come to corruption exactly, a little bit later. headlines after enough. headlines Fair. every single day. Uh, let me get uh, my thought. Jeremiah Koine, of course, Member of Parliament from Deragua. The same question, are we better off now? 
Um, are we better off? Yes. Are we where we should be? No. Can mm. we get there? Yes. And I think um, uh, there will be a multiple uh, of, there are many things that will need to be done. Mm -hmm. And um, what we need to do is, um, uh, one is be positive about it. And two is um, try and do something on a daily basis. I know we, it's really the question that, the rhetorical question that was asked sometimes back by one of the president in the U.S. who asked, who asked uh, don't ask what the country is doing for you, mm -hmm. ask what you can do for, for the country. I think we are there. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a kind of a population, we didn't quite get the numbers we thought. We thought we would go beyond 50. Mm -hmm. But the numbers grew very fast. We have a very big uh, youthful population in this country. Uh, a population that will need to needs to be provided for, they will need to be provided with employment opportunity and mm -hmm. many things. And the issue is how can we really engineer ourselves to ensure that uh, we change the direction where the country, the economic growth is there at six percent, mm -hmm. but uh, the individuals, the Kenyans, are really not feeling that growth. And where, and where does this them, disconnect? Where they, does this disconnect then come from? I think as far as the numbers are impressive. Mm. They are quoted everywhere. The president, in fact, in the latest address to the nation, said the economy is strong. Yes. It's not. According to him, nonetheless. Yes. Mm. Let, let me ask that. I, Where I think, does that disconnect then come from? And uh, this is the bit. I think the economy is growing at, 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 the, at the top. At the top. But uh, where the, we have the populace, there is no growth that is being felt. Mm -hmm. And this will be, we'll have to do is something that uh, uh, Bernadotte talked about. It is the policies that we have. And there must be some deliberate, um, uh, you know, the deliberate work done to ensure that uh, this growth is felt at the bottom. And this again happened in the year 2007. Mm -hmm. I remember 2006, when, before we went for these 2007 elections, mm -hmm. there was a, the growth was almost at 7%. But the populace was like, we are still struggling. You're telling us you're growing at Nairobi, mm -hmm. but it's not happening at the Machinani. Mm -hmm. And that gave Kibaki mm -hmm. a, a major problem in getting re-elected. Let, let me interject you at that point. There, let, let me interject you at that point, which begs the question, is the economy then working for the people? No, it's not. No. Who is it working for, Benji? For the top. For the top 1%. Because the top 1%, the system is very warped. You heard Mishmua talking about the youth bulge that needs to be provided for. What he's talking about is the youth need an opportunity to do something, to be busy, to open small businesses and actually realize progress and growth. That cannot happen when the regulatory framework is, is oppressive. Mm -hmm. I, I've been very lucky to learn and live in a country for many years where you can literally come um, <clears throat> out of nowhere and become somebody. Why? Because of the level playing field. So today, if you're not really connected or if you don't have a godfather, what are the chances mm -hmm. of getting a meaningful tender and supplying proper staff, even under the different things like the youth uh, one, which is, is it called AGPO? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and the different ones you need. H how do you get money to start a business? And the cycle when, of certificates. When, when I have business. actually seen the central bank governor himself, mm -hmm. you know, a man who is very, I think, in touch with reality and adept in communications, mm -hmm. conceding that we have a problem with interest rates. Mm -hmm. These are just basic facts. When the judiciary is riddled with corruption, how does a young man like yourself start something mm -hmm. and then compete with the big you know, dynasties, etc., and business owners mm -hmm. to actually emerge? That is why the distribution is the problem. The effect is not really felt at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Money is not ex exchanging hands. Mm -hmm. And this is very bad even for security, um, even for trade. Mm -hmm. And primarily, one will say this is because of And also policies? for poverty. The policies, the system is rigged and the policies are oppressive. There has also been misgovernance. When you misgovern mm -hmm. Abu Bakr, mm -hmm. you end up in a situation where money has been borrowed, it has been, the same money has, money has been stolen, mm -hmm. and then the money, the loans have to be paid back. If that is not the definition of a crisis, Moshimiwa, I don't know what is. Let me ask Betty this. Uh, Benji talks of uh, policies. If at the helm of these offices are individuals who, due to limits in terms or what so, are changing, coming one after another to occupy these offices, and the same problems persist, where then is the genesis of this issue? Uh, for me, I'd like to say that uh, the policies are actually there. 
the people who make them or revise them are actually there. They move in, they move out, others come in, you know, others go out. Mm. But for me, I take it back to what do we do with these policies? To what extent, you know, are they implemented in such a way that the common Mwana Inchi down there will feel that, yes, there's such and such a policy that actually protects me? And for me, I would flip that conversation to ask, what does the common Mwanainchi in this Kenya want? Mm -hmm. What does the young man, young woman out there want? What people want actually is just opportunities and opportunities for them to and, and, thrive and opportunities and, and, and for them to thrive. Exactly. And, and exactly. Before yeah. you even continue, you ask what does the common Mwanainchi want? Yeah. Do you think they are being asked that question at a participation level first? Before even the policies are crafted? And I'm thinking in, your, are, own, in your own view, do you in, think? In my own view, no. Our, our public participation is also one area that we need to, to look at and, and actually improve. But these are conversations that, first of all, need to start at the family level, at the household level, at the community level, before then they are raised you know, up. Really, what does a common woman down Mashinani really want? She only wants a way to send her children to school. She wants a way to send her children to hospital. Mm -hmm. She wants to, you know, walk or drive or cycle on, on, on good roads. She wants market, you know, for her, her merchandise, or whatever it is she's Plus producing. basic needs, of plus course. Basic, plus basic needs. Fair enough. So, <laughs> yeah. Let, okay. let, me, let me bring Mashima to the discussion. Before he comes in, before he comes in, we live in a country where a lady who has hardly gone to school can sell sugarcane, not realize payment for that sugarcane, mm -hmm. You can have a person come for years. Mm -hmm. You can have a person come and head a company that processes sugarcane, import sugar, mm -hmm. pack it, make money, and run to become governor and win. I mean, this kind of rot, mm -hmm. systemic rot, is what must be discussed on the floor of the house mm -hmm. and what must be fought. We must not give up. This is, it's, it's a and very and bleak Benji, situation. On that, on that point, do you believe what you're calling the systemic rot can be defeated? 100%. Yes. 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 Fair enough. Uh, Mashimo, let me get you to the discussion. Mm. If then we have good policies, we have yes. good laws that govern the country, mm. and the implementation of this is lacking, why spend money in crafting these policies, crafting these laws? Mm. If at all, they won't be implemented? No, they will be. I, well, let me say, we have to deal with a lot. We have to deal with the corruption. We have to deal with all this wastage that we have. But as we are doing that, and as we are sitting in parliament to craft the policies, the young men in Dalawa are still waiting for what do I do today, mm -hmm. tomorrow, mm -hmm. what do I do after tomorrow. Now. They may not have Which are the questions time. leaders and they are, they are really questions that uh, bother me on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think we need to do, I, I saw it, we, it was done a little bit a while ago, is take programs to the ground, deliberately to empower people. That time it, we called them economic stimulus program. Mm -hmm. And they helped the young people to have something to do on a daily basis in the, in the construction needs and, and the rest. Today, I think what the young men are asking is, where can I get some real capital to start something? Mm -hmm. Can you give me a washing machine, a car washing machine or something? I see the county people doing that and uh, trying to help them in a way. But I think the national government needs to come in a big way. And uh, I think that is what the government is doing with this Biashara Machinani, where they, are, they have money that is cheap money available to the young people who can then borrow. And the idea is that they are, they are at uh, to use the money for seven years, mm -hmm. then given three years grace period to repay the money, uh, and question, so that they can and, then and, and, be able to get, get into economic uh, activity, grow the economy at that time, create employment, and that must be done at, uh, at the, at the, the down there, mm -hmm. at the constituency yeah, yeah, level, at the count, yeah. sub count level. Let, let, yeah. let me ask you this question. Isn't that not the language of every leader, from the presidency to the MCA level, that every time a leader wants to get to a certain office, flowery languages such as empowerment, we will improve your life is being used, but the disconnect is really improving in the, the life of the only thing, let, let, let The only answer thing answer is that, uh, that uh, it is not a, a language that you talk about now, mm -hmm. because we are not going into elections next year, then it is, it, we have some... But it seems as though we are already in an electioneering period. Unfortunately, and that is why one of the, the, you know, the discomfort within some quarters. Mm -hmm. The issue is that that needs to be done. And I'm saying I have seen some governors, I've seen some MCAs, because, again, these are docket with the, within the county government, but mm -hmm. the national government must come in. Mm -hmm. But I, and I can tell you that in uh, Nyandaro County, the president launched the Beshar Machinani in our own county. I haven't seen the money going to the youth as yet, but idea is that these are things that must be done and not just talked about. Mm -hmm. And we can't wait. Intervention measures must now 
be done. There's no time to talk. The policies are there. We It's already known. We know the numbers that we have. We have the sensors. We can uh, give you some very good elaborate um, uh, projections and uh, statistical information about our country. But we now need to ensure that we deal with the issue of what is that young man waking up to do tomorrow. Benji, let me ask you this question before we go for a break. Often, in a progressive democracy, one will assume data or facts, findings will be used by those in authorities to reach a certain goal. Do you think in your own observation that some of these facts, some of these data collected from Kenyans has been used by those in power to improve their lives? You see, for me, Abu Bakr, I'm able to speak objectively because I'm apolitical. Uh, Mushmo Kion is a Jubilee MP. So, conceivably, um, we have a problem with the policies and the political direction that the country has taken, even before all of this electioneering, as you call it, um, um, has happened, mm -hmm. because we have a disconnect between what Jubilee policymakers say and what they do. So, and for this, example, and, and do you think this is exclusively to the Jubilee? Yeah, I government? think it's exclusively Should to we the not be Jubilee. Fair that some even of these though problems existed before them, they existed before, and the other side is incompetent mm -hmm. as well. As well as corrupt, <laughs> but Mushmoa just considered that the president came and launched something, which up to now, you know, that puts him in a very bad situation. By the way, he might not say, it, but I'll say it. You know, these, and I tell them all the time, and we talk. And you know, for someone to tell you the truth does not mean that they hate you. Mm -hmm. This country, Abu Bakr, needs urgent solutions. These things need to happen yesterday. Things are not working, and people are despairing. Uh -huh. And so, it's not enough to talk about numbers. It's not enough to talk about stadia or stadiums. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to talk about women empowerment or youth fund. You must deliver and implement, which is why Nzoka Waita, for example, mm -hmm. was appointed as a secretary for delivery. But after a while, uh -huh. that docket was stripped and he's now chief of staff in State House. I I'm more than we sure, have I'm, a problem with implementation. Fair enough. I'm more than sure some optimists will see your paintings as though they're too bleak to describe. No, they are the reality. Hold on yeah, that the thought. numbers will back me up. Hold on, hold on that thought. It's time for us to take a short break here on Spotlight. We still have a lot to discuss. We'll be back after this break with more of this. Welcome back to Spotlight. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Remember, as always, you can text us on double two zero four seven, and some of your feedback is already coming in. Uh, I'm Oscar from Babadogo. Uh, Oscar says, I myself can say that Kenya is worse off now. Hi, I'm watching from Juja. My thoughts are that the country is worse off now. As young people, we need our government to act on our behalf. Hi, I'm Chris from Nakuru. He wants to ask, what can the solution be? Before we get to the solution Chris is asking for, Betty, uh, when we have such feedback, and because of the nature of this channel, our audience reaches mainly young people. And young people are, in these words, not impressed, not hopeful. Should this be a worry? Oh, yes. We need to be very worried. We need to be a worried lot because young people out there are looking up to us, you know, the us of today, mm -hmm. you know, for direction. They're looking up to us, you know, for solutions. Uh, they're seeing what people in leadership are doing uh, and, and what people in leadership are not doing. They are watching really almost helplessly, you know, as resources meant for them, you know, is being channeled to personal, personal po pockets. Mm -hmm. And looking at even their own participation in political leadership. They're crying every single day that where is the space, you know, of young people. I want mm -hmm. to believe if you went on and on, you know, reading the tweets, it would be the same. Definitely we'll get to some, you know, some we, of it. Yeah, well, and on that exactly, point, you know, we, we have seen the number of young people actively engaged in politics or leadership increase over the years. Mm -hmm. One will, I bet, ask the question, what have these young people who have so much wanted to be in these positions done? 
well, there's quite a number of, 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 of youthful um, uh, MCS that mm -hmm. I know of, youthful uh, members of parliament mm -hmm. uh, who have actually done, you know, qu qu quite something. And I'm thinking that perhaps it might be unfair, you know, to, to, to target, you know, young people uh, in terms of what really have they, have they done mm -hmm. when we're not looking at the entire, entire picture mm -hmm. in terms of the, you know, the systemic challenges that are but there. Is there, is there, is there well, a problem? Is there a problem in pointing them out for instance, if at all, from the beginning, the perception was when young people get to these positions, they may be the change makers. Exactly. And that... There, there should be no the, problem holding the, them to account. There with, there's definitely no problem. The mm -hmm. minute you're, you're put in a leadership position, whether you're young or old, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the rule is the same. The standards, you know, are the same. But I want to believe that young people in leadership are best placed to articulate issues of young people themselves. But I think the young people out there listening to us tonight mm -hmm. must go back to the drawing board and, tell, and, and get themselves to the point of reality that, look, no one is going to just give it to you because you're young. You have to fight for it. You have to organize you know, yourselves in such a way that decide who among you is going to be the flag bearer and all of you rally behind that person. But mm -hmm. with, with, with the caution that once you young person you go in, please remember the other young people who actually put you, put you there. But we need our young people, uh, the, their voices in the right places at the right time and in the right volumes because the future of our country is now for them and it is tomorrow. Fair enough, Betty. Jeremiah, before we move from this topic, I, I bet because we are out of time as well, uh, more than just the complaints then, what can be the solutions? What is it that the current crop of leadership is not doing that ought to be done? One is, um, let me see. When the young man says the country is we are worse off now, I appreciate and it is um, the feeling of the young people. For those who've been there a little bit longer, they'll tell you that we are not worse off. Mm -hmm. Because um, if you look at the infrastructure, for example, I can just tell you that I have been unable to access um, outs of Nairobi through Thika Road uh, in the past because of the way the road was. And now, now we have that um, uh, huge road that we have and you can be able to move like I drove along it to hit this place and you not believe where I was when I received a call from uh, Elizabeth. Uh, so th without doubt, we have, uh, we have moved as a country. But what I'm saying is that that young man who has graduated from a college, from uh, his finish his Form 4 and the rest, uh, will not be looking at those mega projects. They are looking at what is it that I can do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And for his world, mm -hmm. certainly things are worse off. Mm -hmm. And it, so it's a question as where do you start when you're answering that question? And the country is moving. We, the, the thing that is without doubt a problem is the issue of corruption. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a quick example that I was in Germany just some two, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And we, they brought down the Berlin Wall some 20 years ago, 1989. That's 30, 30 years ago. 30, 30 years ago. And uh, within 30 years ago, the very bad towns in the east of Germany mm -hmm. are now developed towns offering all the things that are being offered in the west. Within 30 years, the country has been moved. Mm -hmm. Within 60 years, we haven't moved in the way that we exactly. should move. Mm -hmm. Why? One thing that is called corruption. Young people, what should they do? Mm -hmm. They should stop supporting tribesmen. Mm -hmm who have been targeted by the anti-corruption But isn't it not the case that the leaders are the ones balkanizing these young people to vote in their favor? Uh, based they on themselves, tribal they, even the young people uh -huh. are very quick to say this is our own. But they, also, they have also gone to school to be able to say that we cannot just be balkanized. Mm -hmm. This is not the 60s mm -hmm. when you be put together and be, you are told that you are, you are threatened. But when now the they have the social media, the minds of these they have people. the media, they have the TV 47, uh -huh. which is informing. They should be able to know that there is no threat being posed by, by that other person. Mm -hmm. The threat is posed by your own person who is stealing from you. Correct. And it will not improve mm -hmm. until we all stop stealing. Because every time we support a thief, mm -hmm. it, you, you support a thief because you want to be poorer yourself. Fair enough. Before we move from this, Benji, let me ask you this question. When will Kenya's democracy then get to that point where we will need to overlook tribe and some of these simple issues. So we talk about that every day, some of us. Mm -hmm. We, in fact, I was just telling Betty, just now in the VIP waiting there, we have now to move in this country in a manner that introduces purely ideological politics, move away from Benji, ethnic I'm mobilization. I'm told, I'm told we have a caller from Meru. Benji, good evening. Kelvin, rather. Good evening. Good evening. Hello? Good evening, Kelvin from Meru. Can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you. Well, um, I have a contribution to make. Hello? Kelvin from Meru, I can hear you well. Yes, um, I'm having a contribution to make. Huh? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, um, there is a question that uh, uh, you are asking initially to the panelists um, that is the economy is, um, is in the right track. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, if you ask that question, it will be a bit relative because uh, for a person like me, I've been, at least been. Um, they have been observing the political trend, the economical trend is somewhere there around 2000. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, I would really say that um, the uh, economy since uh, 2000, 2002, up to around 2013, when Kibak was in town, it was actually in the very right part. Mm -hmm. yeah. But since then, uh, 2013, uh, to 2017, at, at where we are right now, like, our economy is, um, is, um, is widening the rift between the poor and the, the rich. Kelvin, then, what do you think is the genesis of this fairness on one side and what you are describing now? I, I think um, the problem still narrows down to this uh, monster we call corruption. Mm -hmm. for, 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 I believe it is like um, it had a very nice story, you know. It's like a very I mean, a nice story book with very good pictures, but the word is the empty. The effort being made by the president and is like being tried to be frustrated by his own people. So okay. it's like okay. the economy has been said for the political class because. You know, they are, they okay, are Kelvin, to... I think we got your point. Thank you for calling. Kelvin from Meru, of course, calling us, telling us when the economy was good. And according to him, when things changed, Benji? Not according to him. Mm -hmm. You can see Of course, it is what? It is his opinion. You can see unanimously. Uh -huh. The tweets, the calls, the emails, the everything. We have a problem. And Moshua alluded to several very good points, which I would only challenge him and ask him. Can you imagine if His Excellency Mwai Kibaki... Mm -hmm had been in power 24 years, like the second president, Arab Moy. Kibaki obviously put us on the right path, on a very strong trajectory, mm -hmm. even with all the issues from 2007 and a coalition government in place notwithstanding. Mm -hmm. The economy obviously was on the right path with the infrastructure he's talking about, with the, uh, uh, with the design of the SGR and what have you. But then corruption kicks in, inflation of projects, mm -hmm. kickback culture, etc. And just to answer and clarify your question, by the way, about young leaders, a lot of the youthful leaders we have are complete jokers. Why? They came in without the right focus into a bad environment, and they've been terrible. And the other example I can give Moshmua, which is even better, uh -huh. when you talk about East Germany, 1989 was 31 years ago. I'd like to tell Moshmua, and this is a fact, that after World War II, you know, Germany was completely, and Japan, they were bombed to powder, kabisa, mm -hmm. and in 20 years... Germany was a world power because of the culture of excellence. Everything, you look at a German car, you look at a German road, you look at and how you Germans do their things. And culture can be inculcated even here? It can, but we have to start. And good, we have good, to start good. yesterday and we have to move tomorrow. Good. good. Uh, Betty, let me move the topics a little bit. Of course, we can't be talking of the state of the nation tonight more than talking of the elephant in the room, which is the BBI report. Uh, what, in your view, do you think the BBI is? Is it, as some say, a waste of taxpayers' money yes. or a consultative forum? Let, let her answer. Personally, I think um, BBI came at the right time. Personally, I support it fully. Mm -hmm. And it came to make two giants you know, shake hands and say, hey, let's pause. As a country, let's pause. This country is bigger than two people. It's bigger than... You know them, and it's about the common mana inchi. Mm -hmm. And let's get back to round the table and just talk about the things that that ill. Us. And you are specific of the two. And I'm specific of the two because that's where it started. That mm -hmm. was the genesis, and then of course it trickled down to to all of us. Mm -hmm. But for me, one of my key things in the BBI is the 
the, the article number one that talks about lack of national ethos. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that underpins even the elephant you say in the room and all these other corruption allegations and integrity issues that we, that has been with us and it is worsening, you know, year in, year, year out. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that except we go back to our roots as Africans, back to our roots as Kenyans mm -hmm. and just say that, look, we have some values that can keep us together, that can give hope, you know, to the young people and can make the leaders, mm -hmm. you know, occupy leadership spaces, you know, the right way. And, and, and you believe the 155 pages report can be the starting point of this? I think it, it, it's a continuing conversation uh -huh. because national ethos didn't start with, with BBI. Uh -huh. It's been there for a while, but uh -huh. I think the BBI just, you know, brought a clearer framework F fair within enough. which let, it can be. Let, let me ask Jeremiah this, given that the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission report that was handed to the president in 2014, the Kregler report, the Ndungu report, which chronicled how land was allocated to few individuals. All these reports are yet to be implemented. Their products yet to be felt by the people. What gives a Kenyan, for instance, in Mandera, a hope that this BBI report will be implemented, unlike all these other reports? One of the recommendations of the Kriga report was to look at the issues that are contained in the 2010 Constitution. Mm -hmm. We may not have implemented all that was said by or provided for in the Kriga report, but there are issues in the Kriga report that have been acted upon and they have helped us to move uh, to point, from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. So I, I really don't want to paint that uh, hopeless uh, situation. Um, and also, even when you look at the... But even in the recommendation... Report, in the, in, let, me, let me tell you this mm -hmm. uh, again, and allow me, because uh, uh, being there a little bit longer is useful. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the recommendations that uh, this Truth and Justice Constitution com Committee, and I have read the document, mm -hmm. are very good. But I tell you, some of the recommendations you want to implement them and you really want to look for a revolution. So it's really managing where we are, where we want to go, and the difficulties that we have gotten ourselves into mm -hmm. so that we don't lose a country in the process. A very difficult thing to sell. I want to tell you that BBI is one of the other useful steps that we are taking today. Mm -hmm. And if you, and I'm sure in the coming couple of days, weeks, maybe one or two months, things will make clear. Because, because even today at least we have the BBI report, it was part of the nation newspaper, mm -hmm. and one is able to read it and see where it is. So it's, and it's also done in Kiswahili, mm -hmm. so that people can uh, be able to see. And the things being talked about here are the same issues you are engaging us on, mm -hmm. the state of the nation. Mm -hmm. Point you really are put on. Because, and these are issues that we must engage and agree that we need to quickly move from where we are. Mashima, the, and question, the, and question I was asking, the question I was asking is, what gives any Kenyan confidence that this report will be implemented to the latter? Because, because all the other reports have been implemented, only that they have not been Partly implemented. Partly the recommendations where it was and I want to tell you also, I, was, I want to caution you. Uh -huh. Because if you sell that narrative, you and no, I... No, I'm not selling, Mr. Moore. Let me, let me say, you and I, uh -huh. and those seated here, and it is actually in your culture that they have this saying, mm -hmm. uh, Mahari taught me, mm -hmm. that uh, choma, nyumba, mm -hmm. at ikichomeka, uh, atayangu itachomeka. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful, because uh, when we... The, the thing is that we have a country, to na and we have problems. Mm -hmm. We have issues. Mm -hmm. But we need to come together. And that is why the, the shaking of hands was one major thing. We had a person who had been sworn in at Uhurpa, mm -hmm. and another one who had been legally sworn in mm -hmm. at uh, State and, House. And what guarantees and the they longevity agreed, they agreed, of this report they agreed, post 2022? They, however, however bad, even if they didn't involve others, mm -hmm. they, they, they give us a semblance of peace. We are able to discuss BBI now. Mm -hmm. We can even mention it. Mm -hmm. Before the shaking of hearts, that was not there. It was tear gas. So the country is moving. When I was, I told you that I was in Germany. Mm -hmm. And uh, even this breakfast meeting that was there, a member who was there was telling us this morning, a senator, that the whole world is celebrating. They want to know what is this? Mm -hmm. How is it that Kenyans came together? And the Americans are asking, how can the, the Democrats and the Republicans come together? Mm -hmm. In German, they are, in fact, the president of Germany is coming. But, but to be fair, and he's coming. to be Why fair, is the coming, coming together was largely what? by the leaders of these political Why associations. Why is he coming? And uh, every the other country, has divided us every, clearly. Every other country is asking, mm -hmm. can our leaders also come together? It's the starting point. Uh -huh. And you cannot just uh, pour cold water uh -huh. on this uh, uh, thing that is actually being... I'm telling you about the Germans. The members of parliament of Germany, all of them are asking, how did it happen? 
you know it is a big thing out there. Mm -hmm. For us here, we still think it's a small thing, and it's normal for us because we, we have bigger problems and we really want to move fast. Mm -hmm. But I also want to tell you that as a country, we also are being appreciated out there. And let's not uh, really demean this issue of BBI. Something well, good. Ben Benji, something good final word, my director is telling me that we're <coughs> out of time. When Shmuel is talking about Germany, and I can tell you for a fact, mm -hmm. I travel quite a bit and I've traveled quite a bit. You travel out there and you realize the world has problems, but Africa has special problems. The reason we have this thing called BBI and all these other things happening that's costing a lot of taxpayer money that has no legal framework is because you have an individual, Rai Lodinga, who said that Uhuru Kenyatta did not defeat me. That he repeated even just last week in Mombasa during one of the rallies. Mm -hmm. How you are going to resolve something like that by putting icing on a cake mm -hmm. in order to mask uh -huh. the issues underneath. Will, you can take it to the bank. Mm -hmm. All that BBI is trying to do is to create a formula that then solidifies tribalism and distributes seats at the top tokenism mm -hmm. so that we say the cake is bigger and the cake represents corruption. Mm -hmm. And Benji, Benji. now, what we wait to, they're in power, so let us be calm. Mwishmo is con confusing mm -hmm. calmness for peace. Mm -hmm. What this country needs is the right but commensurate if, if, if the progressive to the, politics. If, if road to peace is started by calmness, should that not be a positive start? It is true, but uh, how do you build bridges by burning others? Look at the situation today, just right in Jubilee itself, which cannot even hold a PG meeting. We I, must stop I, kidding I, I, ourselves. Uh, you see, one of the other things that BBI is trying to sort out is that uh, pessimism It's not uh, pessimistic, approach. it's realistic. We need, we need to be a little bit more positive because you cannot move out of this building mm -hmm. if you keep saying there is fire outside and uh, without doubt there is no fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you scare everybody and you have young men who are scared there is fire, they will not also move out. So I want to say that BBI, and I, I say this because I was, involved, I was involved in the 2010 constitution mm -hmm. and I can tell you the issues that are addressed, being addressed by the BBI is to move this constitution to the next level so that it delivers better mm -hmm. to the Kenyans. Finally, what guarantees the longevity of the implementation of this report post-2022? That is. I am there. I, I share the, the CIOC. CIOC means Constitution Implementation Oversight Committee. Mm -hmm. In the wisdom of the draft draft of the Constitution of 2010, they created a constitutional committee which had been lost in the last parliament, which is government. supposed to implement, mm -hmm. to oversee the implementation of this constitution. Mm -hmm. We still are trying to make it stronger because it had been weakened before. Even this BBI, if it is left with that, if it's done with that wisdom, mm -hmm. we should be able to benefit from the Thank you, uh, and at that point, we'll it. have to end this implement discussion. It's never, it's never Wonderful. enough to implement have such a discussion. Nonetheless, it's not the first, neither will it be the last. Yes have this discussion. Uh, Jeremiah Kioni, Member of Parliament, Betty Adera, Benjin Dolo, thank you for making time honorable for us. Honorable Benjin Dolo. <laughs> <laughs> for I don't like the honorable myself. <laughs> 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 on that light note, we'll have to end this discussion on Spotlight. Thanks for watching. I'm Abu Bakr Abdullahi. On behalf of the entire team that made this production possible, bye for now, but enjoy the rest of our programs.